I obviously really love printing with filament printers, and while most of my 3D printing is done with a filament printer, I've gotten sort of addicted to resin printing. I'm going to go over the pros and the cons of resin printing and why I think that 3D printing enthusiasts should all try printing with a resin printer. My background is in photography and I grew up shooting film. There's been this renewed interest in film photography and film developing. I think that the interest in film is because the process of shooting and developing film helps you think more about the art form and seeing something appear out of a bath of chemicals, that's just magical. I've been printing for the last few months with the Elegoo Saturn 312 k resin printer, which I upgraded to from the Elegoo Mars. This video isn't sponsored. The people at Elegoo's PR team were nice enough to send me one to play with, but no strings attached. So let's talk about the specific reason to 3D print in resin and the several important drawbacks to the technology. Some of these drawbacks are critical, so stick around for those. A resin printer basically has a TV screen on the bottom that projects an image in ultraviolet light. Where that light is displayed on the screen, the resin hardens, and where the light isn't displayed, the resin doesn't harden. A resin printer projects an image for every single layer of the print, and then the resin is slowly hardened into the shape of your creation. The higher the resolution of the screen in your printer, the more detail you can get from your prints. Just like the TV technology that resin printers come from, resolutions are measured in things like 4K, 8K, 12K, and so on. Once you print the piece, you have to wash off the extra liquid resin that clinging to the parts that hardened, and then cure it by placing it in UV light. You can do this with a curing station, make your own with UV bulbs in a box, or put the prints out in the sun. Quick reminder I wish I didn't have to make, never look into a UV light. It will blind you faster than it can cure the print. Okay, so the most significant advantage of resin 3D printing is its precision and detail. This isn't so important with a functional print like a replacement doorknob or a drawer organizer, things that are easy to make on a filament printer. But for models, sculptures, tabletop, gaming solutions, and other high detail uses, resin printing is able to create stunning detail. For high resolution printing on a filament printer, you need to use a small nozzle like a 0.2 nozzle, but a high resolution resin printer has the same high resolution with every single print. Prints come out smooth and almost glass-like, requiring minimal post-processing compared to other 3D printing methods like filament printing. I might sand off some small spots on a resin print sometimes. Like, look at this print. I haven't done anything to this print. This was right out of the printer. All I did was take the supports off. What? You said you love my t-shirt? Well, it's available from the merchandise tab under this video, and I'll have a link to it in the description. Show off your love of 3D printing and support the channel at the same time. The next thing I love about resin printing is the wide range of materials to choose from. There's standard resin, high resolution, resin. There's also tough as ABS plastic resin. That's the same kind of plastic that's used in cars and planes where strength is a primary concern. Resin also comes in different colors, but even better, you can make custom colors with a resin dye. A lot of people think that resin printers are slower than filament printers, but that's often not the case. See, with filament printer, the more things that you're printing on the build plate, the longer the print job is. That's because the filament printer has to make each object on the plate layer by layer, but it also has to jump between the objects to print multiple pieces. That slows the whole process down. With resin printing, though it doesn't matter how many things you put on the build plate. It matters how tall the tallest object is. That's because the entire build plate is exposed to UV light at one time, so it doesn't matter if you have one thing or 50 on the plate, it's the same print time. In other words, each layer of a resin print is built one at a time as the build plate moves up a little bit and the whole plate is exposed at once. You'd also think that filament printers would be the best for doing prototypes, but a lot of industries use resin printers to quickly make high detailed samples of parts since they can produce a lot of them on the same plate at the same time. Okay, so those are the things that I love about resin printing, but there's also some things that you really need to pay close attention to when you're resin printing. Let's start with the most important one first. Resin produces awful fumes that are really bad for your health. Do not resin print unless you have good ventilation system or unless you can print in an open drafty space like a detached garage. While I'm working with resin, I wear the same kind of masks I use when I'm spray painting. I wear eyewear and disposable gloves. Gloves are really important as liquid resin can be a skin irritant. It's also hard to clean it off of your hands because it's not generally water soluble. There are some water soluble resins, but they're not usually the best choice for resin printing. To clean off resin prints, you need alcohol like the kind that's in rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. But you also need a high quality isopropyl, something 90% or higher, which is more expensive than standard rubbing alcohol. As you probably learned in school though, isopropyl alcohol ignites very easily, so you have to store it properly so you never have any problems. You also can't just pour liquid resin down the drain because it's bad for the environment and it will clog your drains. But once it cures, it can be thrown out with no problem. For some reason, many people who resin print don't wear eye protection and I've never figured this out. I guess they think that resin won't get in their eyes. I've accidentally dropped an open bottle of resin on the counter and I've had it splash across my body, including my safety glasses. Let me know in the comments below that you promise you will always wear safety glasses. I really recommend silicone pads to go under the printer and that you buy a UV flashlight to quickly cure any resin that spills and thanks to those two 
things, I'll be able to cure this puddle of resin and peel it off of the surface. You also have to make sure that the room you're printing in doesn't have outdoor light coming in. The sun produces UV light, which is why humans get a sunburn. Make sure that any windows that you have near your resin printer have curtains or are fitted with some UV shielding material. And then there are a couple of things you need to keep in mind when resin printing. Just like a filament printer, resin 3D printers require regular maintenance, including tank cleaning and the occasional replacement of the clear film on the bottom of the resin tank, which is called the FEP. I also really recommend getting a screen protector for your resin printing because most of them just put the glass plate underneath that FEP and you can scratch it pretty easily. Removing the support structures from resin prints can be time consuming and sometimes a little tricky if you've got a really delicate model, but it's a lot easier than trying to pull the scaffolding off of a filament print. Since you have to wash and then cure the prints, it can take longer to post process a resin print than a filament print, so you need to factor that into your workflow. Resin printers also often have smaller build volumes than other type of printers, which limits the size of the objects that you can create. But don't let these cons scare you, they're easy things to deal with. I think that printing in resin opens up a lot of design and output possibilities, and it's just fun too. But like with any good tool, it comes with its own set of challenges. It's important to weigh these factors when you decide if resin printing is right for you, but you can get a small resin printer for not too much money, which lets you jump into it and see if you like it before you invest more. If you're already doing resin printing, let me know in the comments below the kind of things that you like to produce, any links that you have to images of them, that would be great. If you're thinking about resin printing and have any questions, let me know those in the comments below and I will be sure to answer them. And I finished recording just in time because I can hear a chainsaw starting to tune up to cut down a tree. So, as always, for Dave Tries This, I'm David Schloss. Thanks so much for giving this a try.